The great thing about Stable Diffusion is that its open architecture allows for a lot of different models. But if you're new to Stable Diffusion, the sheer amount of choice might be overwhelming. And even if you've used Stable Diffusion before, you might not know what all of these different models are. So I'm going to do my best to explain the different Stable Diffusion model families and give you a little bit of a history lesson so that you better understand what led up to this point in time. And that'll help you understand a little bit of what lies in store in the future. The first thing to understand is that there are five families of Stable Diffusion models. In order, they are Stable Diffusion 1, Stable Diffusion 2, Stable Diffusion XL, Stable Cascade, and Stable Diffusion 3. There are other image generation models out there like Hunyuan and Flux, for instance, but those have slightly different architectures. I'm going to be focusing on the ones released by Stability AI, the mainline Stable Diffusion family. Let's begin with Stable Diffusion 1. I'll give you some of the pertinent details up front, and then I'll go through a timeline that covers some of the more important milestones of this model. If you're using a Stable Diffusion 1 model, it really helps to know how it was trained so that you know how to generate images better with it. The images used to train Stable Diffusion were pretty limited in size, uh, initially 512 by 512 squares or 512 by 768 rectangles. Images fed into it were, you know, cropped and reduced in resolution to fit this size. So that means it knows how to generate pictures that are 512 by 512 or 512 by 768. That's why, generally speaking, you'll get best results if you generate images inside of this resolution box. Now, most people agree that that's too small to work with, so that's why High Res Fix was invented. It's a workaround to generate the image at a small resolution that's acceptable by Stable Diffusion and then upscaled to produce a better, more detailed result. There are basically two flavors of Stable Diffusion 1 models, uh, realistic styles and anime styles. I'll get into that in a little bit more detail in a minute. Stable Diffusion 1 is not as popular as it was a year ago due to the rise of Stable Diffusion XL, but it's still favored by people who have maybe lower system specs. Generating images is very quick compared to XL. The models that you see today are also very polished. It's easy to train and fine-tune on this model, and people have been doing that for the entire duration of its long two-year history. Launched in August 2022, Stable Diffusion came about as a spin-off of other research already conducted by CompViz and Runway. Runway is still at the forefront of image generation, most famous for their video generation models. But while Runway keeps their models to themselves, the mission of Stability AI was to create open models for anybody to use. So when Stable Diffusion 1 came out, it got a lot of attention, including from Novel AI, a company that specializes in chatbots and image generation. And in fact, to this day, Novel AI uses their own proprietary version of a Stable Diffusion model. We'll come back to Novel AI in a second, but first let's talk about the release of Stable Diffusion in August 2022. In those earliest days, it was very awkward. You just had to run a command line utility in Python to generate uh, 512 by 512 images, and negative prompts weren't even a thing yet. But it didn't take very long for people to make nice, easy-to-use utilities, including someone named Automatic 1111. And by about October 2022, Automatic 1111 Web UI came out on top as the most commonly used one at the time. Now it's October when things really start to heat up for Stable Diffusion. At the beginning of the month, we are still talking about the Stable Diffusion 1.4 model, which most people are not familiar with. It's very awkward to use. It's kind of, you know, a toy thing at this point. But in mid-October, something interesting happened. A data leak from Novel AI. You see, at this point in time, 
at least when it comes to anime style images, Novel AI was the best game in town. And in mid October, somebody posted a torrent link to 4chan. It was the proprietary Novel AI anime model. And it was at this point that stable diffusion use exploded in popularity, because this was the first time that people could make anime waifus. And I'm not even kidding about this. A lot of progress in stable diffusion from the community is driven by the desire to make anime waifus. So anyway, mid-October, novel AI leaks. October 20th, Stable Diffusion 1.5 comes out, which is a modest improvement on Stable Diffusion 1.4. And if you look around at Civit AI, for example, you will see that Stable Diffusion 1.5 is still in use to this day. But something that's not discussed very much anymore is that Anytime you take a look at a Stable Diffusion 1.5 model, especially if it's anime focused, it's going to have some novel AI DNA in there as well. You just won't see anybody admitting it because it's kind of illegal. But by mid-November, we already have a significant improvement upon that, which is the Anything V3 model. I think this is one of the earliest models you can go back to and have the quality still hold up. And this is also the point before an explosion of a lot of different models. So this is going to be a good time to explain what training and fine-tuning and mixing is. While the underlying technology of image generation is very similar across all models, each model that comes out works in a slightly different way. So when we are talking about a base model, we are talking about the way it was trained and the way you can run inference on it to produce images. For example, Stable Diffusion 1 and Stable Diffusion XL are different enough from each other where they are not compatible at all. While this may not be apparent in your web UI, it actually under the hood requires two different sets of code to run each model. So when we talk about Stable Diffusion 1 models, we are talking about a set of models that may or may not share the same training images, and they all use the same underlying technology of Stable Diffusion 1. So really, if you use Stable Diffusion 1 as a starting point, you can draw a line out here to Stable Diffusion 1.5, and since all of that was made by Stability AI itself, you can consider that kind of the trunk of Stable Diffusion 1. Models like Novel AI, which took Stable Diffusion 1 and ran with it, can be considered a branch off of the main line. So branches like this are referred to as fine tunes. And the goal of these is to specialize in something specific like an anime aesthetic. Whereas the mainline trunk of Stable Diffusion is trying to be a general model, or a jack of all trades if you will. But the cool thing about it is, since they're all on the same architecture, they can be mixed back together. So if you like the properties of a certain fine tune, but you still need some of the properties of another model, you can merge them together. And that creates a hybrid model known as a mix. So in our timeline here, where uh, Novel AI gets leaked and then Stable Diffusion 1.5 comes out about the same time, People start mixing those two models together to get better results out of both models. And in, in the next few months up into January 2023, we get even more models that are trying to specialize in things like better anatomy and better um, realistic, photorealistic images, things like that. So getting into January, you have a lot of different fine tunes a lot of different mixes going together. And this is most well documented with the orange mixes. This guy's model card is like looking at a history book for stable diffusion. You can see all of the major players here and all of the different recipes for mixing these models together. So to give you a time frame for this, the orange mixes come out about January, February, March 2023. 
And it's really after this point where things start to explode. I can't even begin to research which models came out when and what they do. But I can lump them into two different categories. One, anime style, and two, the realistic, photorealistic style. Everything else, kind of Western cartoons, stuff like that, those are kind of subcategories. And then you have other things that are like way out in left field, like, um, like abstract type of things. But the vast, vast majority of them at this point are simple mixes. They're just taking this model that they like and mixing it with the other model that they like. And to some extent, they are incorporating individual LoRa's into there. Yes, you can actually just put a LoRa into a model. And some LoRa's are actually so massive that they might be better considered their own individual little models themselves. But even though all of these models um, look very different from each other, they all have the same ancestry. So with LoRa's, you can apply a character LoRa for basically any of the models across the board, and they still more or less work on every single one. That's because when you train LoRa's, you go back to the most common ancestor you can find, which in this case is Stable Diffusion 1.5. And that's what makes Laura so special. So when you have a Laura, it could be from six, seven, eight months ago, but it will still work on the very latest model that just came out. So anyway, back to the timeline around, you know, kind of January, February, you have your anime style models that are kind of going in the orange mix direction. And you have your more realistic models that are coming off of F222 and zac 3D. And basically from this point on, we are iterating. Every model is getting incrementally better month by month. There might be new fine tunes. There might be things incorporated into it from time to time. So really the story with Stale Diffusion 1 is that the first few months are a lot of progress is being made. And then after that, it's just kind of incremental progress all the way up to what we see today. And keep in mind that even though Stable Diffusion XL comes out in mid-2023, we'll get there in a moment, Stable Diffusion 1 remains very relevant all the way into 2024. So don't underestimate the power of fine-tuning and mixing over a long period of time. But I think that's going to do it for Stable Diffusion 1. Just to sum up, it's the first one to come out. It's got the lowest uh, system requirements to be able to run. Um, anything you see today has a very long history of being refined over a two-year period. It's fallen out of favor to XL, but it is still not dead in late 2024. Let's move on to Stable Diffusion 2. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one because it is not a very popular model. Released in late November 2022, Stable Diffusion 2.0 was a disaster from the beginning. While it coincided with the release of Depth Control Net, which is a very useful thing even to this day, Stable Diffusion 2, in and of itself, left a lot to be desired. Stability AI decided to be more aggressive about filtering out not-safe-for-work content, and also was much more aggressive in removing training from certain artists that didn't consent to their stuff being used in training AI. The resulting model was harder to prompt with and in some respects was not even as good as 1.5. This is especially in respect to anime style images because we already had the novel AI leak to work with. So basically with no widespread adoption, Stable Diffusion 2 died on the vine. And keep in mind that Stable Diffusion 2 is a different technology from Stable Diffusion 1. So you can't mix the models together. There's not even any hope for getting the best of both worlds. And that's pretty much all I have to say about Stable Diffusion 2. It's an overlooked relic of the past. And that brings us to the next one in the lineup, Stable Diffusion XL. While alpha testing began in April of 2023, Stable Diffusion XL 1.0 was released in late July 2023 and it was pretty well received. 
named XL because it's trained on 1024 by 1024 size images as opposed to Stable Diffusion 1's 512 by 512. Stable Diffusion XL was the biggest open model to date. However, with the benefit of over 9 months of fine tuning at this point, Stable Diffusion 1.5 was still in the race, and in fact for anime style images specifically, Stable Diffusion 1 remained the standard all the way into the beginning of 2024. Now again, XL is a different architecture, so we can't just take the best parts of 1.5 and merge them into XL. So now XL and 1.5 are advancing in parallel with no crossover. So on our timeline, things advance more slowly for XL due to two factors. One, there's still a lot of attention on SD 1.5. And two, it takes a lot more time and resources to train up stuff for XL. Nevertheless, we had a few people that were very eager to work on XL. An example of a major milestone was from Hello World, which was a realistic fine-tune that came out in late August 2023. And on the anime side, we have Anime Confetti Tune in October and Animagine 1 very early, starting in August, and Version 2 following up in November. I'm sure I'm missing a couple, but the point is that XL takes a backseat to 1.5 all the way up till about January of 2024. At this point, on the realistic side, you have Epic Realism, and on the anime side, you have Animagine 3, which is starting to make even the best 1.5 models look a little bit outdated. But the biggest thing to hit in January was Pony Diffusion. Neither realistic nor anime styled, this model was made by My Little Pony fans and furries. Whereas most anime models take their images and tags from Danbaru, this model took from a variety of sources including E621. What made this model so special was the sheer volume of images that it was fine-tuned with. And it diverges from XL 1.0 to such a degree that some people consider it its own base model. Now, from a technological standpoint, it is XL. It's the same architecture. LoRa's from XL work. You can merge it with other XL models. It's compatible with XL1 from a technical aspect, but from a practical aspect, it is very incompatible with LoRa's train on XL, and it's very hard to merge other models with Pony. So, de facto... Pony Diffusion became a new base model, despite the fact that it is technically SDXL based. Alright, so what makes Pony worth talking about so much? This point was a paradigm shift where a lot of people started paying attention to XL. Pony was just better in a lot of aspects. It could do anatomy better, it could do hands better. It knew a lot of different concepts that the XL models just didn't have. So after its release, you start seeing realistic and anime fine tunes that are based on Pony. That's not to say that the other XL fine tunes aren't uh, relevant. They still very much are. We just now have um, two different parallel paths for XL, the vanilla flavor and the Pony flavor, if you will. So if you're browsing Civit AI for models and Loras, keep in mind that some of it might not be compatible because of the XL Pony split. So that's XL in a nutshell. As of August 2024, I'd say XL is still the dominant model. Um, we still have to talk about Stable Cascade and Stable Fusion 3 though. February 2024, Stable Cascade gets released. The interesting thing about Cascade is that it works a little bit differently. There's one more stage to the image generation process. There's a small first stage that generates the relevant latent space of the image, and then that's handed off to a second stage which makes it bigger and more detailed and stuff like that. The interesting part is that in theory, it's a lot easier to train 
uh, fine tunes based off of that smaller first stage. It requires a lot less resources to do, and supposedly you don't need to train up that larger second stage quite as much. So what's the problem with Stable Cascade? Why don't we see more of it? Well, for one, it requires a lot of VRAM. I can't really run it on my machine. I don't have the beefiest machine, but I don't exactly have a toaster either. And two, uh, shortly after it was released, Stable Diffusion 3 was announced, and that kind of discouraged a lot of people from fine-tuning on Cascade. There are a couple of experimental fine-tunes out there, but there's really not a lot of attention on it. So moving forward, despite the promising architecture, I think we're dealing with a Stable Diffusion 2 situation where it's just gonna be forgotten about. And that brings us to Stable Diffusion 3. Released in June 2024, it is the last release from Stability AI. Stability AI actually ran out of money, and there are no more plans to create future Stable Diffusion models. As of recording, Stability AI is still in business. They still got a few more projects that have been released, but to my knowledge, there is no Stable Diffusion 4 on the horizon. As for the popularity of Stable Diffusion 3, I think it still remains to be seen. There was a bit of a fiasco with the license when it first came out. A lot of people weren't even sure if they could use it. So that didn't really help with early adoption. And here, over two months after its initial release, I'm still not quite seeing the same level of excitement for 3 that I saw for XL when it came out. I guess time will tell if Stable Diffusion 3 will become as popular as XL is today, but there are already competitors like Flux coming out. I'm not going to go over Flux in this video, it's a different architecture from Stable Diffusion, but to be honest, I'm seeing a lot more buzz about Flux than I ever did about SD3. So it's entirely possible that while XL continues to receive a lot of attention in the fine-tuning space, the early adopters might skip three altogether and go right to the new toy. And that's gonna do it for today. Those were the five Stable Diffusion model families. I knew this video was gonna take a long time, but I did not expect 20 minutes. If you're still here listening, thank you for being here this long. I don't know why you would listen to somebody ramble about Stable Diffusion for 20 minutes, but thank you. I hope you learned something. See you later, and have a nice day.